So let's see how fast we can create a composite and don't worry, we're gonna start with a free feature. So let's say you are browsing for stock images online or just looking for images and you want to license something or you just wanna test an image for your composite. You don't even save it, you just take a screenshot. That's it. So I'm taking a screenshot right here. Now let's get back to Photoshop. So all you gotta do is to go to plugins, pick Simperfect Compositing. Yes, you heard that right. We did make a plugin. Yes, it does have free features. Yes, you can find it inside Adobe. It's Adobe approved and it's very, very affordable. We created it keeping students in mind. We're gonna get to that later. But for right now, you just need to open Arrangement and paste from clipboard. You wanna make sure you wanna remove the background as you import the image. You wanna import it in this document and you wanna also convert it into a smart object. So let's paste it and it will do the magic for you. There you go, and this is a free feature. Now you can size it up, so I'm gonna keep it just like that. Now we wanna match the color, right? So we're gonna go to the matching section, and in here we want to copy the color from the background, right? So select the background, and we wanna copy the color of it. It does everything in the background automatically, and we want that color on our subject. So with the subject layer selected, by the way, there are lots of ways in which you can apply it. First is curves, Curves is our favorite. It also analyzes the subject and accordingly, take a look, it matched the color. Now you can reduce the opacity of it if you wish to. I'm gonna keep it at about 90, that's fine. Now one of the things that we use to fine tune the color and the lighting and match them perfectly is using check layers. We have covered it in this video. So we can create a brightness check layer. What it does is that it takes all the colors away so that you can focus only on brightness. So let's click on brightness. Brightness check layer is active right now. It's obvious that we wanna fix the brightness, right? Because we created a brightness check layer and that is activated right now. You can deactivate it if you wish to. So let's activate it. And we wanna make adjustments based on the brightness check layer. So all you do is click on new adjustment layer and it will create a corresponding adjustment layer just to fix the brightness. Have a look, it's already clipped to the subject, so you don't have to do any of that. Everything is automatic. So you can open up the properties right here and you can adjust it to your heart's content. So I'm gonna make it slightly darker. Maybe let's fade it a little bit, just like that. Maybe a little more darker. There you go. Now that's done. You can deactivate the brightness check layer right from here. By the way, you can also create other check layers like saturation and hue. Let's say we click on the saturation check layer. It shows which areas are more saturated and which areas are less saturated. And if you create a new adjustment layer with the saturation check layer active, it will create an adjustment layer right here, which is hue saturation to adjust the saturation. We're gonna get to all of that later. For now, let's deactivate it. We don't need the hue saturation. Now, the other thing that we do to create separation is blurring the background. And we have stuff for that as well. There's a depth of field section. You wanna select the background, have a look. This is a raster layer. This is also locked. Still, if you click on something like tilt shift, because that's what we want right here, and slowly and gradually it blurs to the background. So let's go ahead and increase the blur. I think 32 is fine. Hit OK. Creates that fantastic separation for us. Now it is already looking pretty amazing. But one of the things that we do towards the end to make the subject and the background come together is simply adding some film grain to it or simply grain or noise or whatever you want to call it. So let's go to the plugin. You can do it directly from here and there are controls for it. So let's open up the structures tab and in here you can just click on plus to add grain with the current settings. You can set the current settings or you can start adjusting it. That will also add a grain layer. Now the best part about it is that it's adjustable. You can change the size of the grain. I'm going to zoom in a little higher. You can change the irregularity right here. You can change the amount of course everything is adjustable. You can turn the layer off and on. You can delete the layer from here. You can add a new one. You can add one more, all up to you. You can add different grain layers to the subject and the background. The possibilities are limitless. This one I want to delete on zero. You can click on plus. A default value of 30, 30, 30 would be applied. Now, sometimes we want to have more grain in the shadows and less grain in the highlights. And that's how an image looks when you take a photo with a very high ISO, right? And we can easily control that with Blendif. But with the plugin, you can control it right here. So usually just for illustration, I'm gonna increase the grain too much so that you can see it. Let's say I don't want it in the highlights. How do we take care of that? We double click on the right hand side of the layer and we take it away from the highlights using Blender, right? And we break it apart and we can take it as much apart from the highlight as we want. Still have a look at the shadows. It is a lot. 
but in the highlights, it is less. The more we take it apart, the lesser it gets in the highlight areas. So you don't have to do any of this from here. You can adjust the same half slider from here. So right now it is at 128. If you take it all the way to the left hand side, it is at zero. Now if you open up Blend If, have a look, it is at zero. So basically all aspects of green are right from here. Now keep in mind, of course, the portrait is not very sharp because this was a screenshot just to test it. Now that's not all. As a global effect that brings the subject and the background together, you can add some presets, some color grading. By the way, these are all unlimited and you can click on create thumbnails and it's gonna show you how each preset is gonna look on your image. Let's say I like this. I'm gonna click on that. You can hold the control or command and keep clicking on that and it's gonna create random variations of that exact preset, of that style. If you go towards a warm style or a purple style like this one, and if you hold the control or command, keep on clicking, it's gonna create random variations of purple style. So wherever you wanna take your color grading, it's gonna take it there. So for now, you're gonna keep it this way. This looks nice, but with a little less opacity. So let's keep it right about there. On top of that, you have textures that you can apply. The options are really, really limitless. Let's say I wanna apply this one and it's done. It just brings everything together so well. You can of course adjust it as much as you like. We're gonna discuss it in more detail later. You can paint in lights. So if you go to the lights and shadows section and if you click on lights and you can start painting the lights right here, as easy as that. If you want to paint colored light, click on that, pick whatever color you want. So I'm gonna go with blue and you can paint in some blue light. You can just go on and on. This has everything you need for compositing. And by the way, I have to admit, we are not perfect. If you find a feature missing or if you need a feature, just let us know in the comments. And if it helps a lot of creatives, we'll just add it in the next update. We got you. The Piximperfect compositing panel is approved by Adobe. It's not a gimmick. So you can go to your Creative Cloud application, go to the plugin section, just search for Piximperfect compositing, click on install, and it will automatically be installed in your Photoshop instantly. You don't even have to restart Photoshop for it. By the way, it's free to install. There are also free features that are extremely useful in your day-to-day -day Photoshop. Now, before we talk about some incredible features like automatic shadow creation, auto color matching, or super fast halo removal, the timestamps to which are in the description, let's take a look at the overall interface. To understand the interface better, let's take a step back and look at compositing as a process. The process of compositing, the entire process, can be broken down into five fundamental steps. You and I both know that. The first one is arrangement, where we arrange all the elements in layers, right? We stack up everything that we need. The second one is placement. We want to place everything according to perspective, according to its correct position, right? The third one is masking. You want to make sure that the masks are proper. The fourth step is matching. That's where you match the elements to the background or the new subject to the background. You match the color, you match the lighting, lighting direction, you match the depth of field, you match the atmosphere and all of that stuff. And the final step is finishing touches and global effects. That's where you add a global color grading, some grain, some textures, both to the subject and the background or all the elements and the background so that everything just comes together beautifully. So if you look at the plugin, it is divided into sections based on those fundamental steps. The first step was arrangement. We have a section for it where you arrange all the elements of a composite. Now we have added layer properties here so that you can quickly convert to smart object if needed or change the opacity quickly. For example, you want to control the opacity of this layer, this layer which is creating that darkness, you can quickly switch between 25, 50, 75 and 100. You can also quickly select the most important blend modes. We're going to get back to it later. And then we have perspective. This is for placement so that we place everything according to perspective. Then we have masking section. And for masking, we sometimes need hairbrushes. By the way, that's also a free feature. You have access to all of that. All kinds of hair, frizzy hair, hair with a lot of caps, hair that is dense, single hair if you want to paint single hair, you also have fur if you need it. So that is all for the masking step. After that, matching. You want to match the color, the lighting, the lights and shadows, the depth of field. So you have everything you need for matching right here. And towards the end, we apply finishing touch and global effects that can include 
color grading. It can include texture. It can include grain. So you have all of that inside of structure and presets. So inside of presets, you can apply some ready-made color grading, create something random for yourself. You can stack up color grading. We're going to get to that later. And then you have structures. You have some textures right here and you can add some grain. Now let's get into the sections in detail. It's going to be a lot of fun. Even if you're not using this panel, it's going to be very useful for you because whatever we are doing in the panel, is not magic. It is not something that cannot be done in Photoshop. It is just making your job quicker, easier, automatic, also keeping it non-destructive at the same time and very, very organized. Now, all of these features, these methods, these steps are just a condensation of all of the techniques that we have covered in the previous, I don't know, 50 or 100 videos on compositing. So if you don't want to do it for this panel, don't worry, I got you. We have a video for it. And in fact, I would insist that you watch it. And in fact, I would actually encourage you to learn how to do it manually first and then look into it. And also, by the way, it's free to install. You can just take a look. Now, let's take a look at the features in detail and let's start with arrangement. That's a free feature. We already learned how we can place images directly from even a screenshot, but we can also import actual images. So if you go to arrangement, you can either choose files. So you can click on it and choose all of the files, all of the image files that you want to import and stack. You can choose a folder that will import all the images from one folder or paste clipboard that pastes your screenshot or any graphic that is stored in your clipboard. You can choose to convert all of those layers into a smart object or keep it raster. That's up to you. Also, you can choose to remove the background as you import those images. By the way, if you keep it turned off, you will also see the masks. If you keep it turned on, you will see them as smart objects. Still, you have access to masks if you double click on them. So let us choose files. And I have four fishes right there. Let's select all of them. Yes, you can select multiple. And it automatically imports, stacks, and removes background of all of them. And there you have it. All of them arranged properly. Now, let me remind you what I'm doing right now is free so you can follow along with me. Now, let's get into arrangement magic, which is adjust and align. This is not just simple alignment. This is something different. Now, have a look. We have four fishes right here, right? What if we want to arrange them in such a way so that you can see all of those fishes? Take a look. Align horizontal. There you go. All of them aligned. Align vertical all of the elements are aligned vertically, just one after the other. So this makes it very easy for you to now arrange them the way you want. Pretty cool, isn't it? By the way, let's quickly match the color. Let's say I want to match the color of this fish to the underwater. So let's select the underwater layer and we're going to go to matching and we want to copy the color of that. Now we want to apply it to this fish, right? So let's select that layer and just click on this button. It also analyzes the fish, by the way. And there you go. That is just incredible. So you can decrease the opacity. Now you can do different curves adjustment layers for different fishes because the colors on each one of them are different. Or you can just try this one. Let's try this one. Let's bring it at the very top, create a group of all of the fish layers. I selected the first one, held the shift key, selected the last one. All of them are selected. Press Ctrl or Command G and hold the Alt key or the Option key Click on the line between these two layers so that the curves is limited to all of those fishes. And instantly, it's a perfect match. Match made in heaven. Let's go with 62 opacity. And there you go. Back to arrangement. Take a look at this composite. Something in it just doesn't look right. Can you tell me what that is? Have a look at the subject. Where is the light coming from? It's coming from the right hand side. But if you look at the background, the light is coming from the left hand side because we can see the shadow on the right hand side. So what do we have to do to fix it? Well, you can flip the subject or flip the background. Sometimes flipping the face can look a little bit odd. So let's select the background and simply flip it horizontally. You can also flip it vertically if you want to create an alien jungle. But either way, let's flip it horizontally and instantly it fits perfectly. Now still there is something not looking right. The original background of the subject was a little blurred and that is why there is no separation here. So let's blur the background a bit. Now here is something that we paid attention to. By the way the option to blur the background would be in which section? Matching. Why? Because we are matching the depth of field. So let's go in here and we want to apply let's say a tilt shift. Let's assume the subject is standing right here and it's going like that. And let's increase it to about 22. Hit OK. Now let's look at it closely. 
even though this layer was a raster layer, we made it in such a way that whenever you apply something like field blur, tilt shift or anything that you might want to adjust later, that layer would automatically be converted into a smart object so that you can go back and change the values if you wish to. So it saves you an extra step. So I got this question from one of our Patreon members very recently is that if I have a selection and I want to adjust something to it, fit something to it automatically, is it possible to do in Photoshop? Well, it's a long way, manual way, yes, but you can do it automatically with this plugin. And again, it's a free feature, so why not? So let's say you want the text height to be till this point and it should end right about there. So what if we create a selection? So I'm selecting the rectangular marquee tool and let's make a selection like this or maybe let's make an even smaller selection like this. And we want the hello text to fit inside the selection. Simply click on adapt to selection and it's done. So you can make any kind of selection, click on adapt to selection and it will fit to it. So this entire arrangement section can be very useful in your day-to-day -day Photoshop, no matter what you do, whether it's designing, compositing, whatever that is. And that is why we made it free so that everybody can take advantage of it. Now on the layer properties, it just makes it very fast for you to switch between different opacity percentages. So let's say we apply this curve right here. This is 100%, this is 75. So you can quickly go through, see what works best. And from there, you can just fine tune it if you wish to. If something is not a smart object and if you want to convert it into a smart object and you don't want to right click on it, find out where convert to smart object is. I know I was just exaggerating. You have a button right here. Click on convert to smart object and it's done. You can switch between some blend modes here. By the way, now that I look at it, I think we need to add multiply here as well and maybe soft line. We'll do it in version two. Don't worry. It's a, this is a customer centric product. Now, labeling, very important. We need to stay organized. So all the subject layers, you can label something like yellow. So the text layers, you can label something. The background layer, you can label something. This is a very simple and small composite, but when you have 200 layers, you want to keep things organized. If you want to take the labeling off, click on this one that takes it off or select all the layers, click on that one. It's gone from every layer. Now let's get some perspective. That my friend is the most important step. You can do all the color matching in the world. You can create the most advanced shadows. You can bring in Leonardo da Vinci and have him paint the highlights in the shadows. And even then, if the perspective is off, something will just not look right. Take a look at this composite. Something is just not looking right. She looks like a giant. Why? Because the perspective is not matching. So first of all, let's turn off the mask of the subject by holding the shift key and then clicking on the mask. Now, you want to create perspective lines first for the subject. So click on subject. By the way, you can change the color to whatever you want. By default, we have green and red. Green for the subject, red for the background. So click on subject, that's all, and start creating those perspective lines. Find a place on the ground that you can use as a perspective line. It can be a corner, it can be anything. By the way, we have a complete video about it. You can watch it right here. And the point where they match is the vanishing point. That's where the horizon is. So we can just draw a line. It doesn't have to be very accurate. This is done for the subject. Now you can hold the shift key, click on the mask, and now all you have is the subject masked out. Now let's create perspective lines for the background. And we can use this. There you go. And it is right about there. All right. It is not always necessary to match the vanishing point. If you can match it, it's best. But even matching the horizon does a lot. Now, deliberately, we have made the perspective lines for the subject close to it so that you can select it together. So let's select both of those layers by holding the controller command, also clicking on the subject layer. Both of them are now selected. Press controller command T and just match these points. There you go. Hit enter or return and matched. Now take a look. And by the way, if you want to move her backwards and forwards in perspective, you would press Ctrl or Command T, place the anchor point on the vanishing point. If you cannot see the anchor point, make sure this is checked. Place it right here. You can also hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on in here, it brings it right there. And then hold the Alt key or the Option key and make her smaller or larger. That way she goes back and forth in perspective. Do keep in mind, this technique is a rule of thumb. 
So since photos are taken with different kinds of lenses, different kinds of angles, sometimes you might have to do a little adjustment. You might have to take the subject a little bit to the right or left, or you might have to make her height smaller or larger. But in this case, it worked perfectly. After you are done or while you're doing it, you can turn off and on the subject and the background perspective lines, or at the end of it, delete both by clicking on delete button. And from here, you can continue the composite. We have a complete video on that. And all of the techniques that we discuss in this video and many other videos are just in this plugin, just a shortcut of it. Now it is time for us to talk about masking without it compositing really doesn't make sense. So it's very self-explanatory. If you click on remove background, it simply removes the background with one click if you need it, very useful. But what's more interesting is remove subject. So if you click on remove subject, the subject is removed, the background is separated, and you do have a copy of the original image. So this, my friend, is the original image, and in here, the subject is removed. But what's more crazier, let's go back, is if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on Remove Subject, it separates the subject and the background, making it very easy for you to blur the background even further. So right now, have a look. We have the background separate, and we have the subject separately on this layer. So now with the background copy selected, you can simply just blur it, go to matching, and inside of that, we want to add tilt shift. You can keep all of it open or keep the sections closed. It's up to you. So I'm gonna keep it like this. Let's extend it this much, 44, hit okay. And there you go, just with a few clicks, we have easily separated the subject and blurred the background. So you have all the important shortcuts that you need for masking in one place. If you just wanna create a selection, you would click on select subject, it's right here. You don't have to select the object selection tool or the magic wand tool or any of that. Even with the move tool selected or any other tool selected, you can click on select subject, and it selects the subject. If you want to make a selection based on color, you can do it directly from here. You don't have to go to select, color range, and just click here. Everything is right here. Select color range, select the color, hit OK. You have a selection based on that. And based on this, you can create a mask. As easy as that. So basically, you have shortcuts to all of the important tools and functions that you would need for your next composite. Now, whenever we do create a mask, we need to check how good or bad the mask is, whether there are some halos or not. So let's say in this case, we removed the background. Now, so far, it's looking all right, but we need to have a solid color in the background to check how the mask is. So you can just single click right here in the contrast layer section. So if you click on black, you would have a black background, you click on gray, you would have a gray background, white, white background. So in white background, it looks pretty all right, but in black background, you see all of these halos. We'll get to fixing that later. But you can easily create a solid background just by clicking on these colors. If you plan on using a brighter background, test it on a white background. If you plan on using a darker background, test it on a black background. If you plan on using all kinds of backgrounds through all of your maybe social media campaigns, maybe billboards, advertisements. If you want to have the same subject all throughout different backgrounds and you want to make sure that the mask looks perfect no matter what the background is, in that case, you want to make sure that your mask looks good both in white and black. If that happens, you do not have to worry about anything. Now, of course, these are just to check the mask so you can turn it off or simply delete it. Now coming to my favorite section and that is removing halos. What better example than this one? Because we already have some halos. Now there are lots of ways to take away halos. There are some automatic ones, there are some manual ones. Now depending upon your image and your situation and the kind of results you want, your technique might vary. So in Photoshop, there is a manual way of taking care of this. And that is by going to select and mask. By the way, there's a shortcut for that here as well. So let's select the mask go to select and mask. And inside of this, first of all, set the view to on black. Now you can scroll down and check decontaminate colors that kind of fills up the halos. So that's what it is inside the panel as well so that you don't have to do all of that circus. So you can just click on decontaminate colors and it will do the exact same thing. Actually better, take a look at it. It's gone from here as well. Now it might not be enough. Some areas, some things you might have to do manually like this one. We're gonna get to it later, but just for a short preview, we're gonna create a clipping mask. Again, shortcut right here. Clone stem tool, shortcut right inside, and take a sample and simply fill up those areas. As easy as that. Now, I didn't do a pretty good job, but you get the point. There you go. You can similarly fill up these areas, and that is even fixed. Now, sometimes we have halos like this. So in these cases, what do we usually do? We simply create a selection by holding the control or command, click on the mask, then we contract the selection, then we fill up the outside areas. It's a long step. From here, all you can do is shrink. 
That's all. Click on shrink and the mask shrinks. Let's take a look at it again. I'm going to zoom in. So shrink mask automatically gone. If you want more halos to go away, for example, if you feel there are halos, you can click on shrink mask again. Now everything is gone. Now sometimes you might want to also feather the edges just a little bit. And for it, once you shrink, you can also click on feather mask. So I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what's happening. It's too much zoomed in. Click on feather. Have a look. There's that slight feather so that it doesn't look unnatural. After that, you can shrink it even more if you wish, but that seems about right. All of the halos are gone. Now let's talk about more advanced techniques that can easily be applied like multiply and screen. When you have a bright or very dark background that is flat, I highly recommend using multiply or screen blend mode. When your background is brighter than the hair, you can use the multiply blend mode because it makes things darker. Why do I say that? Let's take a look. So in here, first of all, we're going to remove the background and then let's create a gray contrast layer. By the way, you can choose whatever color you want, but I'm going to create gray. Now, right now it's creating white halos. We need to make it darker. Now, what is the blend mode which makes things darker? Multiply. So that is why when you have a brighter background than the hair, you use a multiply blend mode because the bright color from the background gets into the hair and we need to make it darker. Let's say we had a fancy background like this. Okay, we cannot even see the hair in this. So we know that we need to use the multiply technique. We're just going to scroll down, click on multiply blend mode technique. And that's it. It's done. So all you need to do now is just paint with black around the edges. So let's make the brush a little larger. Paint around the edge right here as well. You just cannot see anything. Once you paint, everything becomes nice. You can paint with white to bring back certain stuff. Now, similarly, if the background is darker and the hair is brighter than the background, in that case, you would use the screen blend mode technique. In this case, we have the cat cut out. The original background was black and we have put a green background and the edges look odd. They have this dark halo. So we take that away with the screen blend mode. Make sure the subject or the cat here is selected. Choose screen blend mode and just start painting around the edges. That's all. Have a look at the magic of this. If you want to double the intensity of it, just make a duplicate of the cat, not the edge removal layer, just the cat. And there you go. Looks even better. Similarly, you can just double the intensity of it and the edges would become more prominent. We also discussed a technique in this video where we used the smudge tool to remove halos. And we have a shortcut for that here as well. Let's say the halo is not all around, only at a particular place. Let's say right here. So how do you take just that area away? Select the smudge tool. There you go. And now just push it in. Gone. That's all. Now, as we discussed, sometimes we have to manually fill up the areas. And that is why we have these manual techniques that is filling with a brush or filling with a clone stamp tool. So if we create a new clipping mask by clicking on this, if we click on brush, we can just pick a color from the inside and fill up the outside areas. You can even pick a brighter color, pick a color of your choice, that's up to you, and just start painting the outside areas. You can even choose white so that you can see what is happening here. So you can paint in the outside hair so that they are visible. All right. And the hair that is a little inside, you can click on the clone stem tool, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, and fill it up. There you go. And it fills up so naturally. So that is how you manually remove halos. Again, there are loads of videos on that. Just search halos in Piximperfect. And all of these functions are derived from those exact videos. Now here you have all kinds of hair brushes if you want to manually paint in the hair. We have covered it a lot of times. So have a look, we have manually painted the hair as well in this case, because if you look at the original background, there is no way separating this. So we have to sometimes manually do it. So here you have frizzy hair, dense hair, wide hair, fur, whatever you want. So if you paint with frizzy hair, this is what you're going to get. This is fur. And these, my friend, are the regular hair brushes. Now coming to the section that we are very happy to share with you. And it's one of those sections that is the most challenging for a lot of people, a lot of composite creators, and that is color matching. Now I do recommend that you please, please first learn how do we use the curves technique, how we use the gradient technique or create atmosphere in videos that we have created in the past, and then jump to this because this will be doing just that 
automatically and as with any automatic things, it may not be 100% correct. You should have the know-how on how to adjust it according to your liking. Again, you have different tastes too. So coming to the matching section, let's say you want to match this subject to that background and you first want to match the color. So first of all, let's copy the color of the background. So for it, select the background and just click on copy inside of color matching. It analyzes the color. Then select the subject layer and you can paste it in two ways. First is curves that will also analyze the subject and accordingly have a look. This is pretty darn close. Now, of course, you can go here and make some adjustments up to you. You can also paste the colors as a gradient map. So if you click on that, take a look. It pastes those exact colors of the background. It's matching just too much matching. So we're going to decrease the opacity and I would say it's pretty much done. If you want to match the atmosphere, one of the things we do, we take the background, we blur it a lot, place it on the subject and change the blend mode to color. That's what we can do from right here. Make sure it is copied and then you can click on match atmosphere and boom, you can take it up, take it down, up to you. Again, it will be applied with a default value of 40. You can decrease it or increase it up to your choice. So we're going to keep it at about 22. For this example and I don't really think we have to do anything else but if you feel you need to fine-tune you can do so with the help of check layers. Now check layers is something which we use to see specific properties separately like brightness, saturation, hue. So right here let's say you want to match the brightness and for that you want to take away all the colors so that we are not distracted by it. So let's activate the brightness check layer. Zoom out and see if the brightness is matching. I think we need to make it a little darker. Since we are adjusting the brightness and the brightness check layer is activated, if you click on new adjustment layer, it will create a curves adjustment layer so that you can adjust the brightness. If saturation is activated, if you click on new adjustment layer, it would create a hue saturation adjustment layer because that is what we would be adjusting. So this button corresponds to what is activated. So right here, I feel that sky is the source of light in this case. And there's going to be nothing brighter than the sky. So we need to make it that darker. So let's make her make the bright areas a little darker like that. We might want to add some shadow there as well. All right. Now you can deactivate the brightness layer. There you go. It's matching even more. You can just paint in shadows inside of light and shadows section. So I want to paint in some shadows. We're going to get to that later in detail. And it automatically creates a curves adjustment layer with a clipping mask and then you can paint in the shadows right here. Make that area a little darker. There you go. Done. By the way, there is a dedicated video on checklists. You can watch that right here. Remember this composite we created a few videos ago? We have based a lot of tools based on just this video. And this is one of my favorites. And that is painting lights and shadows. You can paint colored lights colored shadows, non-colored lights, non-colored shadows. Let's take a look. So this is the highlight that we had created if you take a look. All right. So we're going to delete it for now. And here's the simple way, the shortcut way. So you can click on lights with the color wheel inside of lights and shadows section. And you can choose whatever color you want. So we're going to go with blue. You can change it later and start painting. That's all. It automatically selects the brush for you, automatically sets the flow. And now you can just paint in blue colored light. So cool that is. So let's add some light here as well. Let's add some color. There you go. Now that looks fantastic. Just doing that just so quickly, we have added a lot. Now you can easily change the color of the light. You can just double click here. You can choose whatever color you want. You can pick the color all up to you. So I'm going to pick this exact color possibly and that works too. If you don't want your light to have any color, you can just click on lights. It just creates a curves adjustment layer with the curves like this. It automatically selects the mask for you. The brush flow at 10%. You don't have to touch anything and you can start painting the light. You can adjust it, of course, according to your needs and then go from there. Anyway, you need light without color, you can just use this technique. Also for this example, let's say you want to paint some shadows. So I'm going to take the shadows away and let's paint in the shadows by clicking on just the shadows. You don't want any color on it. Boom. That's how you paint. So darn easy. So click on a button and start painting lights or shadows, whatever you want. But what if you want to extract the existing shadow? 
Let's get to that. So in this example, we have a simple composite. We have a wooden surface. On top of that, we have a camera. Now the camera has its own shadow. So how do we bring that shadow in? We usually use the multiply technique to make that happen, but you can easily do it right here with two buttons. Make sure the subject or whatever you want to create the shadow of or extract shadow from, that layer is selected. Then click on plus. It automatically creates a shadow layer and it automatically selects the lasso tool for you. Make a rough selection of the shadow, just like this. All right, and click on extract shadows. Done. That's all you needed to do. Now, of course, you might have to do a little bit of adjustment. So you can open up curves. You can brighten or darken the shadow according to your style. So I can darken it a little bit and remove the extras. So if you keep it all the way to the right, it may keep a little bit of the extras. So you can just control it from here. There you are. You can also color the shadow if you wish or take away the color from the shadow. So here you have a hue saturation adjustment layer which takes away the saturation from the existing shadow. If you want it back a little bit, you can have it back. You can also colorize the shadow if you wish to. You can have it red, green, whatever you want. So you have all the control. For me, I'm just gonna keep the saturation a little lower. Works perfectly. Now coming to global effects, and we have discussed this briefly before. To bring the composite together, we can add an overall something. So let's start with grain, noise, whatever you want to call it. You can go to structure. By the way, we have discussed this already in here. Click on plus and it adds grain based on whatever value is set right here. If everything is zero, it will add 30, 30, 30. You can adjust how much of the grain you want in highlights. So right now in the highlights, there is less grain. If you want more grain in the highlights, you would take it to the right. If you want lesser and lesser grain in the highlights and only grain in the shadows, you would take it more towards the left. It is just adjusting the blend if right here. That's all. Now you can turn it off and on to see how it looks with or without. Now, of course, it's just bringing that together. You can delete it or add an extra. Let's say you want some more just for the background. You click on plus. You see the naming of the layer. Whatever value we used would be named right there. And we can have this one just for the background. Let's bring it down right here. And there you go. We have more in the background. You can adjust it even more. You can increase the size or the amount. So that was green. Now, of course, you also have some color grading presets and these are actually unlimited in a way. So if you go to presets right here, here's my favorite part. If you want to see how this image is going to look like in all of these presets, click on create thumbnail. And it creates your thumbnail in all of these presets. I actually like this one. Let's click on that. And there you have it. Now, if you want to create a variation of this preset, you can create unlimited variations. So hold the control or command and click on this. It creates variations of that warm preset. If you want to make the image colder, you would click on that and then create variations of cool presets. So this is how it works. First, you decide where you want to take it. You choose whether you want to make it warmer colder, faded, purple, and then create variations based on where you want to take it. By the way, if you want to stack one on top of the other, for example, let's say I like this one at opacity 60. I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option key and I want to stack this one on top. So that one would be applied and this one will stack on top. And if you ever want any help with any of these, click on this button and it will just turn on the help text guide you with everything. Now on top of all that, you also have some textures. So let's go there. Especially in a composite like this, it makes more sense. The light is on this side, but we can always flip it. Control or Command T, flip horizontal, or why to do all that? We can just directly go to arrangement and flip it horizontally. There you go. And that looks nice. We can decrease the opacity, just brings things together. And here's the seamless pattern texture that's also here. So anything with the letter P right here, is a seamless pattern. But before we stack up these textures, let's apply them by clicking on this button. And on top, we can click on this. Now here's the exciting part. I know this looks a little odd, but I'm making a point here. So if you open up the pattern fill, you can just move it as much as you want, wherever you want. You can scale it, you can make it smaller, larger, and it creates a wonderful dust effect. So I'm going to keep it this much, hit OK, and actually place this texture. First of all, apply it and place it under this one. And it creates that wonderful dust. And you can take it behind the subject or you can just take the subject mask and paste it right here, replace it. 
We want just the opposite controller command I, so it creates that dust in the background which is so good. You might have noticed that most of the examples we used in this video are from previous videos that we have done over the course of, I don't know, five years? maybe six years. So this plugin is a condensation of all of those techniques that we have covered. Now the idea for this plugin came about when Robin Oaks, who is a superbly talented plugin creator and developer from Picture Instruments reached out and said, Unmesh, why don't we create a panel? And I thought, there's a panel for retouching. Actually, there are lots of them. There's a panel for color grading, tons of them, but there aren't many. Actually, I haven't seen any for compositing. So why don't we create something for compositing using all the techniques that we have covered in the past? So here we are. Now, I'm a person who doesn't know anything about code. They are the experts, but I know the techniques. So we kind of worked together, shared our ideas, shared the technique, shared what we can do. And this, my friend, is the result. I also want to take a moment to especially thank Yan for being such a great help in developing this plugin. Actually, he's the one behind most of the code. Now, when it comes to pricing, both I and Robin were thankfully of the opinion that this should be affordable for everyone. And the pricing model should be such that everybody's happy with. So you can get it as a subscription for just, guess it, $2. Yes, you heard that right. $2 a month, which you pay annually. Or if you don't like the subscription model, you can also pay a one-time fee and just have it. Get the full license. It's up to you. I hope you enjoyed this plugin. Just get it for the free features if you don't want the pro ones. Directly from Adobe, from the Creative Cloud. Or you can simply click the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.